Whoop, 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 whoop. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Lineage Breaker Grand Archive TCG Podcast. I am your host, Cam. With me, as always, is Glue Man. Hello, Glue Man. Hello, Cameron. Hi, Steven. How are you? We're back. A dinosaur's story. Uh, I'm all right. I'm, uh, you know, uh, as usual, high tired. I'm dead. I know, um, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm kind of kind of high energy today, even though I'm only on like five hours of sleep. I don't know why, but that's that's how it works. It's up until six thirty in the morning doing God knows what. I don't know. Just, yeah, I I I slept to like four yesterday. It's it's really tough. You know, I've been grinding out weathering waves, so uh, I was up to like two. Wah wah, yeah, wah wah, woo wah, woo wah, yeah. Uh, so I was up to two in the morning, and then I went to bed because I knew I had to come and film a show. Yeah, you went to bed. When I woke up. That's true. <laughs> I d- I, I've had a real breakthrough this weekend playing uh, TFT, as Uh-oh. I do. That's all I do. Okay. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm, like, kind of cooking. I guess <laughs> it ended pretty poorly last night. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm unstucking myself from Platinum. So, okay. like, I'm, like, P2 right now. We're, oh, we're getting close. You're getting there. Getting close to escaping the, the Platinum curse. I don't know what any of this means. Because I don't play TFT. Mm. But have you ever played a video game? Nah. Mm. I see. I don't play video games. But anyways. <laughs> uh, I was up real late. And uh, now I'm here. We're here to talk about that their anime titty card game that we love so much. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. As oh, usual. This one. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, is there another one that you had in mind? Are you, well, yeah, are you cheating on us? Oh, my God. Listen, man. Hey, I'm you just You gotta saying, let some stuff go. Like, I'm just... I can't. I can't. We were talking to Geo and Leak Blade oh in, in Vegas, and they told me about it. I, it sounds sick. Just let it go, man. I can't. <laughs> Listen, there's gonna there's gonna be a time, you know, twenty years from now, where we're talking about GA back in my day with our with our walkers and the old folks home. Like, oh, I used to play this game, and then I'll tell you to shut up too and just move on. You know, we gotta we gotta live in the now. Hey, and Force Will's dead, bro. It's not. It's dead. They're releasing new sets. I, that is that is not. I didn't Literally. say that wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> that game is so dead. Anyway, listen. If you play Force Will, you out there watching this Grand Archive TCG show, I would have to assume the crossover is pretty big. If you play Force Will currently, in in today, please let us know. Devin, look at him. He's right there. Force of Will is cooking. I I don't I don't think that's true at all. Boom! I'm telling Boom. you, he's blowing smoke up your ass. It's it's not all right. What did I say earlier? <laughs> so, welcome back to Lineage Breaker Grand Archive Tuesday podcast. We are in a bit of a strange time frame today. Today is Friday, and this weekend, so as of recording, like twelve hours from now, uh, is San Taipei. So a bunch of our friends are in. Taipei, ready to battle it out for our first ever MRC ascent. Uh, but we're in that sort of weird spot where uh, we'll probably have a lot to talk about next week, post Taipei. But we don't have a whole lot to talk about this week. But we're going to spend some time talking about the emerging metagame of MRC. Uh, maybe a little bit of time talking about some other Taipei stuff as well. So we thank you for for being with us it's been a it's been a fun fun little season so far so something that i was doing last night before we get to taipei uh in my being up until 6 30 in the morning i went back and i was uh like skimming through the anniversary stream mm-hmm. um that feels like it was decades ago but was <laughs> like i don't know six weeks or something yeah. um because I was looking for a certain, uh, you know, I, uh, Miss, Mr. Gray Wolf, watch the show, f- fan of the show, friend of the show, uh, still at art. Uh, I try to hold him to all of the things that he says. So I, I think that's why he doesn't, you know, say uh, things, say things <laughs> as, as often. Um, but uh, there was something that I remembered him saying, and I couldn't remember where it was. So I like went to go find it in the anniversary stream so that I could talk about it today. On yeah. the show and be like, remember this thing this guy said? Because you know, I have a I have a secret sneaking suspicion that still loves it when we do that. Yeah. You know? Well, because he says things on purpose, and you know, I, I I would like if it were me to be uh you know to to remember the things and and uh, a lot know. of the things he says um like 
when he's being cryptic about things. Well, they're all true, right? Like they're well, all no, like no, well, they're no, all no. like you know. No, I understand, or but you know? like I, I lineage break, which is the collective. Hello, are we're never wrong. True, 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 true. Stephen. Stephen always one hundred percent wrong about everything Sil has ever posted. <laughs> well, like I, I remember that thing that he said about uh, the 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 bird and the dog are free right. to roam around or right. whatever. And I was like, I, "What does this mean? Does that mean we're getting beasts with no pride?" Yeah. Nope. No, it was the figure. The, the, the figure. The, the birds move. Uh, so something that Sildar said on the anniversary stream. Did you know, Stephen? Because maybe you know it's been an exciting time. People are buying their MRC. People are getting ready for Ascent Type A. Chicago's coming up. We have Supporter Pack coming out. Anime Expos in a couple of weeks. Lots of things to be excited about in the GA world. But do you, Stephen, know when the, the next uh, Bands and Restricted announcement is? It's Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, it's next week. Yeah. It's right after Type A, which makes sense. Right. But something that one silly dar said on the anniversary stream, which was about six weeks ago, is that there was maybe a new Proxy's Vault card coming out soon. Correct. And I, so uh, I just uh, remembered that at four in the morning. and was like, oh, hey, the new ban list is on Monday. Yeah. And there's probably no bans. It's it's a new format. Well, I would be are, shocked we, if there was we, cards we just got that. We just got uh, an adjustment, didn't we? Yeah, it was the last one, yeah. 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 Um, but like brand new format, I don't assume that anything's gonna get. You don't think erupting list. is just gonna move up? Because no. it's on two now. Yeah, but like nobody's I, nobody's playing that deck. I understand, but like every time we've ever seen a card go to two, then following ban list, it goes to one. Um, uh, maybe I think Crystal was there for for a, 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 a few BNRs. Huh. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was uh, almost instant. But no, I think erupting sucks. No, nobody's playing that card. I think uh, I think it's uh, down bad. Uh, we'll see. You know, as the metagame sort of evolves and progresses, I think people will go back to trying that. I think a lot of people are trying the, like, brand new um, things. But as we get uh, a little bit more data and maybe we'll see a descent, we'll, I, I think we'll, we'll probably re-explore erupting. But I do, like, legitimately think that deck is not at least not the boogeyman that it used to be. Correct. Uh, I, I think the sideboard change is really bad for that deck, which is... Good. Good for the game. Bad for that sort of linear strategy where people, assuming they're not being greeters, have way more sideboard slots now. Um, but yeah, just uh, just an interesting thought that I had, that we are probably getting a Proxy's Vault card on Monday. or Yeah, I think it's Monday. Monday or Tuesday, yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly what it's going to be. I know what I hope it's going to be, but... Um, a new mage? <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, you know, it's it's to support archetypes that are unplayable, so I uh -huh. hope it's an Arisana card because oh, God okay. knows she needs it. But uh, I can't really think of what else it would be, which is a little bit um, interesting. That what do you... If it is an Arisana card, what... what? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea what it, what it does. I don't know how you fix that pile, really. Um, I know how you fix that pile, but uh, it breaks it. Uh, I don't know. So yeah. Every time you start a call draw... Yeah, it's, no, it's, <laughs> give, give her some absurdly broken card. I I have no idea, but I, I really don't know who else is in the... Because last time, we, we sort of... We're not last time, but one of the other times, we sort of predicted the existence of Corhazi Insignia, uh, almost to a T. Because we were like, oh, well, Xander needs the help. Right. Uh, this was at a time that Lux and Xander was not the, the nightmare deck that it is now. Uh, but we're in the point now where it's like, who needs help? You know, and it's it's not mage, it's not tamer, it's not assassin, it's not warrior. It's maybe maybe it's guardian. I don't know. Guardian feels okay to me. Ranger. And the only one that comes to mind to me is cleric, but I know that that's the joke, right? So I don't know. Interesting. Maybe it's something else entirely. Maybe it's uh, another elemental card, sort of like scepter of lumina, that is more like blanket applicable. And uh, and helps out multiple archetypes, but it, yeah, it's a, a little a little strange to hear. Uh, do, do we know if I don't know if it's ever been soon. said? Mm. Uh, can Proxy's Vault card? Or is it only material deck? Yes. Okay. It's only Regalia cards. It cannot be main deck cards. Okay. Or I guess not only Regalia, but yeah, only material deck cards. Okay. Uh, that's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure because like, you never know, right? Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, interesting. I think it would be really cool to see another champion. I think that would be sweet, but I don't know. I don't know. It's like maybe it, maybe give a, a new Ari Sound 3 that feels better with brewing. I don't know. There, there's like a, a couple of things that go into it that – because like obviously they always subvert our expectations, right. so so it's hard for us to to predict things. But ALC being so new makes it seem like, you know, I'm I'm not trying to make this about Ari, but um, ALC being new me- means to me it seems very strange if they were to make a replacement for like an entire champion for ALC. Those champions are far too un- unexplored and and far too new, especially with MRC just coming out. Um, but. The only champion we've gotten thus far is Xander. And Xander was to, like, distinctly fix a problem. Like, Xander 2 is just categorically unplayable. And I don't think that any of the current champions of any level right now are are that bad <laughs> as Xander 2 was. Uh, so I, I wonder if they'll use Proxy's Vault as a space to, like, explore new options. I would sort of assume not. I would assume it's only to fix problems if they're printing a champion. Because this is, like, sort of a logistical nightmare to have Xander... Uh, deft executor exist especially for this collector's game where who knows how you get the foil csr of that maybe it'll be an sp2 that would be a a good way to do it but so i don't know uh but yeah exciting we will have that to talk about next week but we're interested to see because new set is great but New cards are always new cards, so we're excited for new cards. Right. New things are good. New things are good. Um, Until they're not. <laughs> something that also should be considered uh, before we start diving into talking about MRC and and how broken Nico is. Um, sorry, didn't didn't mean that to sound. Uh, that sounded sound good. sound a little negative. That sounded a little shady. He's not even throwing shade at Nico. He's, it felt like he was throwing shade directly at me because I've been playing <laughs> Nico. He just like slapped me in the face at the uh, table. No, she's all right. Um, we, of course, have a Ascent presentation to think about mm-hmm. that is going to be with us like tomorrow or Sunday. Sunday. Which is exciting. Or mon- can't can't mon- wait. Monday? It'll be Sunday, right? They're 12 hours ahead of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sunday. Yeah, it'll be when we wake up Sunday morning. It'll all be out. It'll be like six in the morning on Sundays. Was one. So you will have watched it live. No, I. Well, maybe. (laughs) Actually, that's maybe true. That's that's probably actually factually true. I don't have to open on Monday or on Sunday. So, um, Mister Salidar made a little post a couple of days ago that AMB pre-orders open soon. Oh, so AMB pre-orders are opening. I did see that. Whoa! Um, you know what we haven't seen anything of? Mm. Cards from AMB. That's true. I don't assume that we'll see cards, but art. Um, I mean, when pre-orders go up, if it really is soon, we need the the product sheet. Mm. Mm. So maybe we get to see that. <clears throat> you know, I don't know if that's too soon. When when, when it comes out, October. Yeah. And we usually get the product sheet like three months ahead of time, right? Now, I could see them giving us champions. I don't know. So, yeah, but I'm <laughs> copium. I'm smoking that cope. That is what I wanted to talk about, though, right? Right. So, um, assuming soon, mm-hmm. Zildar means actually soon, mm-hmm. means that we do probably get to see the product sheet. Um, and the product sheet is usually gives us like some art, and we get like the CSR numbers and stuff. Uh, but something that I can't remember, so hopefully you, your memory is better than mine, is when we uh, we think back to ALC time, this is Ascent Houston presentation. Mm-hmm. That was the day that we got the product sheet, right? Yeah. We got the, the names of the champions and the product sheet. That is what we got for Houston. No, we like actually saw champion cards. No, we Didn't saw we? exactly Tenoris level three from oh, correct. the starter deck. Correct. We saw a starter deck, Tony level three, and then we and had we the, had names, the names, names of all the rest of them. And the art for them, yeah. Um, and th- that was the day that we got the product sheet. Correct. Because, oh my God, it all makes sense. No, no, no. No, no, no. We've, we've figured it out. We've cracked it. We've cracked the case. Because on the product sheet, Stephen, assuming that we get that, I don't know. But we're, we're just trying to take Mr. Grey Wolf's 
Correct. Uh, tweets for gospel. And if it's soon, like, where else would it be? You know, first, uh, this is the first SEA ascent. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, first ever SEA ascent. Assumingly, they, they bring the big guns for SEA. It's a huge tournament, by the way. Well, yeah, it's huge over there. They posted the posted the turnout, um, and I think last uh, it was checked, it was like 2 230 yeah, or something. It was like 233. Um, yeah, but it was like, I think it was like 80, 80 players that were from abroad. Yeah. Um, so, like, you know, SEA players was like, what is that, 150 SEA players? Insane. So, shout out to you guys. Can't wait to see who wins. Um, but if if we do get the product sheet, the product sheet has to have the uh, MSRP, uh, UPC codes, all that nonsense for the starter decks for, for AMB. Mm-hmm. And if we have that, we, we know the champions. Correct. So we must see the champions then. What if... I guess there could be no starter hold on, decks. Hold on, hold on, <laughs> but, but like, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm hold cooking. On. He's cooking, he's cooking, he's cooking. Cook, cook, cook. What if... You know how we were talking about not having all seven classes represented? Oh, God. What if the no starter decks are three champions, or three classes, Yeah. and then the main deck are four other classes. I would be insane. I think there's no way. I think there's no way that that's at all feasible. <laughs> oh my god, this copium's real good, guys! You don't you want try that. It. You don't want that. I kind of do. I, I know that you don't want that. I kind of do. Because those, those champions won't get supported at all. You'll get like six cards for each champion. That's fine. They'll, they'll, they'll all suck. That's fine. <laughs> uh, we can't We can't do this. My hope. If this is all true. Who knows? My hope is mage, but she's cute. Please. Please, dude. Give me please. Give me an old man cleric so I can rub it in Cam's face. Listen, that's okay. I'm Gimme give, give me a broken Astra <laughs> cleric so I can rub it Listen, in Cam's face. <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity guy. All right. I have no problem with Tenoris. Or Rye, or Allen, or whatever. I just, as a consumer, want the choice. You know. So I if I choose a class, I want the choice to play a boy to play or... a cute girl. No, no, no. I didn't say. I, I don't want. <laughs> no, 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 no. Cam wants to play the boy. No, 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 no. I want to be able to play the cute girl, and I know. And they know, and I know they're watching. I know they're watching. We see one of you in chat. They understand. At Weeb of the Shore. Cute girls sell, man. Like, they're not... They're not stupid. I think Tenoris is the way that he is very specifically. Because that's, that's what you need to do. That's that's my marketing 101 right here in the, in the gray. You know what? The, is the, it neither needs to be a cute girl or it needs to be himbo bait. And that is exactly what Tenoris is. <laughs> they needed to sold. double down on the himbo bait. And I told everyone that. I agree. And I told everyone that. The deck box should have been 2B. I agree. I I think we should double down even further, Steven. I think there should be more main deck art of Tenoris with the shirt off. Yeah. Pop that shirt yeah. off. I want to see them abs. We get we get Heavy Swing. Heavy I Swing's know. a good one. Yeah, Heavy Swing's a good Holy. one. Holy. You know how I feel about it's that got card. Those packs I love out. Heavy Swing. We need another poll talk. A poll cock type, says chat. That is reasonable. That I'm, is, I'm all for representation. I love poll cock. Me too. I think he's sick. I am a poll cock. Also uh, <laughs> hot. That dude's yoked. Yeah. I must start lifting. It's fucking Well, ripped. he has to carry that fucking calamity cannon <laughs> around. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's his big old tenor. Um, <laughs> not, not doing that on, on the stream. Uh so, anyways, oh boy, it, it, it's it's all come together. So, so maybe we will uh, actually see some some sweet A and B stuff um, this weekend. That'd be very exciting. Yeah, I'd be. But cute mage girl, please. Hi, do it for me. God, we're we gonna have an. I'm not. I'm not the cleric guy anymore. <sighs> it turns out now I'm the mage guy. Yeah, we're gonna have another campaign about. P- please print the cute mage girl. I know. Listen. You God know, damn it! I figured <laughs> out. I figured out that I've secular. Uh, the uh, the cyclical. Um, Cic- cyclical. Wow. I figured out that I have a type, Stephen. It's cute girls. Well, that's true. But I thought, I thought all along, you know, I thought it was the cleric thing. You know, look at her. 
But it's not. Arisana. It's, it's not. It turns out it's just Dai Dai's art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turns out no matter what it is, it's, uh, it's Dai Dai's art. So that yeah. that's the turns real, out, like, w- far and beyond yeah. copium is that it's a, a cute mage girl that's drawn by Dai Dai, and I'll, I'll lose what it. What if it's a cute mage boy drawn by Dai Dai? That's close, I guess. But, like, come on. We know for a fact he said it to himself. I don't draw boys. Oh, was that him? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know it was one of them. I, I thought I, it was Die Die. Maybe. Yeah. It, it was. It was one of the artists that says I. I, I don't draw. Uh, oh no no no! It was um. Uh, who did the art on Bedivere? That's that's how we figured oh, out. Who, yeah, oh, that's how we figured oh, out. It was it's a, one of it was the the dragon art people. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, they they said oh, okay. I, I don't draw boys. <laughs> we're like, all right, yeah, that's reasonable. Uh, so that's all very exciting. Our our rambling is over. I like the ramble. Well, you guys know how it goes. We're a little bit light on news this week, so you get a lot of the the, the Steve and I rambling, so that we can. I think they come here for <laughs> the Steve and I for, uh, for the Cam 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 and Steve ramble. Kumai, thank you, Pora. Uh, Kumai is the one that does uh, better your art. Correct, and only draws cute girls. Correct. And so Bedivere is a cute, a cute girl. We saw that uh, amazing art by Gule on Twitter. I'm sure you all saw it. A Bedivere in a bikini. I don't think I did. Chef's kiss. Shout out to, to Gule. Um, so. It's a new time. It's a new format. We got new decks to play. And we have had the first, like, pretty large event. Yeah. Of course, we have a Sen Taipei this weekend, and that's what we're we're excited talking about. But we've had some other bigger events. We had the. Um, by the way, I just want to like gush a little bit. We had the Luxeras Open that was um, this past weekend. I was uh, lucky enough to do some of the commentary for that event with the folks over at Serene Balance Productions. Great people, love them to death. I would I would die for that Tyler and that Andy and that Theo. Uh, and Mitch's okay, I guess. <laughs> um, Whoa. But uh, it was 107 people. I think the idea of the Luxeras um, Open is terrific. It is the first time that we've had like a large tournament that wasn't a regional. It was um, prize support, I believe, was sponsored by Weebs of the Shore, which is great. Thanks, Weebs. You guys are great. Uh, so the prize support was insane. It was a free event. It was shit tons of prize support. It's like actually wild. Uh, but I really like this idea of a separate from the like game's own tournament structure, this like grassroots uh, tournament that is uh, was an invitational to a tournament that's going to happen in A and B season. Uh, it's super cool. I, I always like these these grassroots things. That's sort of what I uh, cut my teeth on as a Magic player is going to like SG Opens and stuff that were unaffiliated with Magic but affiliated, right? Um, so I really like the idea that we're starting a little bit to get that sort of grassroots uh, tournaments that are run outside of the normal structure. So big shout outs to all the guys all over at LM uh, for, for running that event. I think, I think it was a great idea. But 107 people, pretty big tournament. Mm-hmm. So we've got our first little peek at the MRC metagame. This is with a with a big asterisk, right? This is, this is a free event. It is not... Um, the prize sport was huge, so you were definitely encouraged to try your best and, and play your best deck, but it was a free event. Uh, it was webcam, so it was very approachable, uh, and so maybe not everybody is playing like the absolute best meta deck that they think would take down an Ascent. Some people might be taking it a little bit more casually, so that's our, our big asterisk as far as using this for metadata, and I know that some people out there have you know gone a little bit farther than that using this data which we're not going to do we just want to talk about the information that we have at hand so before we talk about our top eight deck list and how we feel about the meta and what we think is good both using this information and anecdotally at in our in our local scene um i do want to talk a little bit about the champion breakdown for this event i have to sneeze i didn't take my allergy medicine this morning steven oh so 107 players. We're not going to go down the whole list, but I think not entirely surprising. Our top two most represented champions for this event were Sylvie and Tristan. Yeah. Obviously, this is due to the recollection decks and the support that they received there, uh, but also, you know, pretty popular characters. People want to try out the new stuff. 
And I think that is a large part of it. So I, I don't necessarily think that this is going to be entirely indicative of what like the Ascent metagame is going to look like this weekend. Uh, people wanted to try the new things, and so we see the new things getting some real success. Uh, but it was it was a lot of Sylvie players, a lot of Tristan players, 23 Sylvie players in, in the top slot. There's a lot. It's like a quarter of the tournament. Yeah. Um, so as far as decks that performed well, uh, the top eight, and again, if you guys want to check this out, you can go over to um, Luxera's map. It's all up there. Um, the top eight was five Sylvie decks. Five. Five. Five Sylvie Tamer decks. Sylvie. Sylvie. You know that... Worst champion in the game. Yeah, Sylvie. that one. Five. Five. Five Wild. Sylvie decks. Wild. Um, no Lorraine. No Lorraine decks. No Lorraine. No Tony. No Diana. Five Sylvie. Well, there was one Tony deck. Uh, one Tony deck. My bad. One Tristan deck. And then uh, the first seed was Fire Arcane Rai. So, taking this information... As much as we can. How are you feeling about our metagame, Stephen? Do you think that this is indicative? Do you think so that we can clickbait so that I can cut this one out for shorts? Okay. Stephen, <clears throat> do you I, think that Sylvie's broken? I think Sylvie is extremely strong. I don't know if the broken is the word I would use. Uh, however, when I was playing against Sylvie last week, it felt unwinnable. Mm-hmm. I didn't, and there was not a single point in the game where I felt I had control. I felt like uh, slimes were just running amok and sliming all over me. I felt like sliming I was sliming all over him. I felt like I was a kid in the 90s and I got gacked. That Nickelodeon gack. Yeah. Steve, you want my hot take? Sure. I think she sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> it's always it's always a derivative between us, huh? It's always, well, you know the the yin and yang, yeah, right? right? Um, but Cam thinks every good deck sucks, and that that's true. Uh, you and then all the bad decks are good, sick. Yeah, yeah that that is very true. <laughs> all the bad decks are sick. That's but, fair. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Sylvie. She's the elephant in the room. She is the mm-hmm. the the beast in the room, the the slime in the room, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, I don't necessarily disagree. Obviously, she doesn't suck. I'm being hyperbolic. Uh, I do think the deck is quite strong, and I'm really proud of what they did. With the recollection deck, uh, because I think even these lists, uh, so five Sylvie lists, four of which were Spirit of Slime. One was a fire uh, Sylvie player. I believe the fire Sylvie player was the highest seed, but that doesn't necessarily matter. Incorrect. Um, but so four Spirit of Slime decks. I'm really proud of what they did with the recollection um, deck because the Spirit of Slime decks are like way closer to just playing the recollection deck than you would think, uh, which is great. It means they did a very good job designing Sylvie's new archetype. Mm-hmm. However, that being said, how I feel about slimes is there is this thing that we see in card games, and this happens very often. We've seen it happen in Grand Archive and in other games all over the place. When the format is new, and people are trying all sorts of new things and different things, and they're experimenting with Tristan. We have 20 Tristan players. Uh, Even the event that we saw previously was won by a fire aggro Xander uh, piloted by one Tyler Once in Love. Mm -hmm. When the format is new, the aggro decks really do shine. And the benefit of Sylvie, especially these decks that performed pretty well in the LM open are pretty close. Like I said, to the recollection deck out of the box, that sort of strategy was built for them and you can tweak it and, and put little additions into it, but it does play the way that Weebs had designed it. Um, And I think that Sylvie is going to stand as this sort of gatekeeper deck where I do think the deck is quite strong and I do think it's competitive. I'm not trying to dog any of you Sylvie players, but it is a straightforward deck it's very big allies if you can't deal with her big allies she kills you um and so i do think that she's going to form this sort of gatekeeper role where she keeps the nonsense out which i think is really good it's it's something that i feel like we haven't really had in grand archive thus far the closest that we had to that is something like fire xander but fire xander is a deck that you could very easily sideboard for you just like cast a resolute stand 
obviously this is like DOA fire extender, not talking about current, but you would just like cast a, a, a resolute stand and they would lose the game on the spot. Uh, so I think Sylvie's going to play that role a lot better. She's a lot more resilient to hate pieces. Uh, so she's going to be that gatekeeper deck. If you can't beat the Sylvie deck, you don't get to play at the tournament, which is going to keep some of the nonsense decks out. And I think the nonsense decks are the ones that are worrisome for the game. If they ever get too good, uh, Hopefully this means stuff like, you know, Luxem Xander has a little bit of a harder time uh, showing up to a tournament because he probably just gets beat to death by giant 5-5s. Five um, but yeah, I think she's good. But I don't think that she will be seeing this sort of success success in the future. I don't know if Taipei is going to be a developed enough metagame for that to be true there. She might still be seeing some relative success at Taipei. And again, I'm not trying to say that she's bad. I think she'll still see some success, but five Sylvie decks in the top eight is absurd. Like that's, I, for any deck, that's absurd. I think the fire deck over the slime deck mm. has more of a like an actual like stance in the meta. Yeah. I think the like the out of the box structure deck Sylvie, as I will call it. <clears throat> What's the structure deck? Recollection deck. I roll. Uh, but I think that f- style of deck will start to fall off more and more. Yeah. Yeah, I think people will find, and we're not smart enough. Those people aren't us. But people will find the decks for the MRC metagame. And um, I think we do see, like, peaks here and there of really interesting stuff. Um, one thing that I think... Most people are pretty uh, on the same page about is the strength of the mages right now. I think both uh, Fire Arcane Rye and Fire Merlin are both quite strong uh, looking at this early format. But those, again, sort of sit in that Sylvie space, even more so where these are established archetypes. And so playing established archetype in the early uh, days of a format usually does get you some success. Uh, but both of those are just very consistent decks. If you can't stop uh, Fire Arcane Rye from doing the thing, he'll kill you. Same with Merlin. She just has a lot of tools to, to combat a lot of things. I assume Merlin is actually probably pretty good into this slime deck as well, which makes her feel quite yeah. strong. Um, as someone who's been playing a lot of the water ally, or the water mage deck, how do you think that deck fits? Because um, I don't see... <clears throat> I haven't seen anyone talking about it, really, or playing it. So... I'm a, I'm a mage player now, guys. Hate to say it. I've been playing a lot of, like Steve said, water, rye. Uh, I don't think it's great. I enjoy it a lot. I don't think it's great. Uh, I think there is probably an argument to playing the water mage shell sort of like how people play Christian Hawks uh, or Christian, uh, sorry, Christian Tom's um, man. That, wow. That brain just exploded. Uh, Christian Tom's uh, list from uh, nationals where you play like a water ally shell, but you could, you change eight to 10 cards to, to give it a flavor. And th- I think there's probably an argument to playing water allies that features exactly eight mage cards and you play Ryan instead. Uh, as far as like leaning into the water mage thing, I don't, I don't really think it's that great. It's really fun. I like it a lot, but I think that the success that you'll see from water rye, at least currently is just playing water allies plus four frost shard plus four Anaya, And that is probably good enough. Um, so maybe that'll see some, some success for people that are water allies enjoyers. Uh, as far as like emerging archetypes, it's, Hard to say. Uh, I don't feel like anyone has really explored the uh, automaton deck enough, and I think there could be something there, but I don't think that that's necessarily true. I don't think any of those cards overtly seem super powerful. Like, we don't have a, like, Ghost of Pendragon Gildas equivalent, right? You can't just be like, this is the one, this is what you build the deck around, it's broken. Uh, they're all like very synergistic cards, so whatever that list looks like is a big pile of synergy, and so it's not exactly clear from right. the outside. Um, I do think there is some play to Nico. You've been playing a lot of Nico. How do you, how do you feel about the, the the big goth mommy? Uh, whatever list I'm playing is incorrect. Sure, that's how I feel. Because, <clears throat> like I said, when I was playing in Sylvie, I literally 
could not play the game. Right. Did not matter what I was doing on my side of the board. I can't deal with six five fives. So you should put two to the test for sure. So I'm definitely thinking I'm uh, putting Nico away for mm. the foreseeable future. I think there might be something there, uh, but it might be in that same way that she's gotten like significantly better than she was in ALC, but that might still not be good enough. Right. So she's like, like there's herself definitely to like two. there's definitely the tools there, but like I can tell you this for a fact. Mm. The list that I am playing beats FISA every single time of the every time. Right. Every day of the week. FISA cannot beat that list. Mm-hmm. FISA will lose. It is inevitable. <laughs> yeah. Uh and uh that's how I feel about that. And I don't think it, I don't think my list again, my list beats any other deck. So here's something that uh I want to pose to you, mm-hmm. Stephen. Uh, in our new slime overworld lord uh, world, that one. Reincarnated as a slime. Yeah, that one. Yep. Uh, we have not talked uh, a whole lot about the other side of the coin. How do we feel about Tristan now that we've had a couple of weeks to see decks perform? We did have one Tristan deck make the Yeah, it's eight. very interesting. I... Um would not expect water. Mm. It looks very straightforward water allies mm-hmm. with a f- couple extra tools to it. Yeah. Going, being able to level four times is probably pretty good. Yeah. Scepter of Luna, uh, really, really good when you go Reaver into, into, into Shadow Dancer. Dancer yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, I've had very high success, I mm. think, with playing Wind. Mm-hmm. Mer- uh, oh, God. Wind Tristan. Yeah. Um, my list is wonky and I love it. Um, no one will ever, uh, change my mind on it. Sure. Uh, the five, five Tristan always the way. Mm, I like Uh, it. But, um, yeah, I, um, I don't know. I think, I think Tristan is very strong. I think the, the new tools that she's been given, not only just for the wind stuff, but also just in general, uh, feels very good. Um, it's, and it's definitely like a step away from, how Xander wants to play, which I also really love that she feels like she has her own identity. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, Stephen, we're old boomers Mm -hmm. and we've been around the block. Correct. Since the beginning of the game. Correct. So uh, at Ascent Houston, Mm -hmm. uh, the deck of choice was whichever flavor of Merlin you want to play. Mm -hmm. She was very highly represented. That was mostly on the back of the power of Sword of Avarice. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and so she sort of dominated that meta, and we all hated it, and we all played it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, shortly after Houston, sort of Avarice was banned. And then for a while there, uh, in that post-ban FTC meta, uh, Merlin was seeing not a lot of play. People were really down on Merlin, uh, thought that she was uh, really suffering. We then got the Crystal of Empowerment ban, um, and people were like, oh, Merlin's terrible, you know. She, she can't do it anymore. And then uh, over time, people realized that's not true. <laughs> De- Deck's actually still very good. Yeah. Uh, but it's not, you know, what it used to be. It's just a very, a very different show. What it feels like to me is I think, maybe this is my, my hot take of the episode, I think that Tristan uh, is the new Merlin. Okay. I think that she has the tools that she needs to play this uh, sort of take all comers control deck that has all the tools, has something to deal with everything, and then has a pretty reliable inevitability engine uh, once she gets to her advanced element. Correct. I just think we haven't found it yet. Okay. So I'm, I've been pretty impressed with Tristan. Um, I, I can sort of, like, sometimes I haven't been really playing her myself, only, like, dabbling here and there. But every so often when I see her played um, or play against her, I, I like see like uh, the, the, the hole through the through the matrix, you know, where it's like I see something there. I'm like, oh, there's something going on there, but not all of the pieces have come together yet. Yeah, I think there's definitely like a combination of what I'm doing and also ominous shadow support mm-hmm. that I'm missing. Right. Because right now what I'm doing is I'm just... I'm leveling whichever path I need to to have the best success. 
and then I'm killing you with mm-hmm. slice and dice or with final strike. Mm-hmm. Not final strike. Uh, Shadow strike. Shadow strike. Yep. Final I'm not strike. Play- bad. I'm not playing final strike. Yeah. That card. <laughs> bad. I think. Yeah. It's a. I think that's a trap card. Um, Unless Tony's really good, I guess. Yeah. It's pretty good against Tony. It's pretty good against Tony. Pretty good, specifically if they get to level three. If they have thirty life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which you know, Warren's putting it in the side. Sure. Um, again. A thing that I haven't been doing. None of the MRC decks I've played have a sideboard yet. Mm. I've just been playing main deck, trying to tune. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know if anyone else has had this like thought process, but since I played in the three v three, I've tried to build main decks that feel more complete okay. without a side deck. Sure. To see how to test myself in how well I can construct the deck mm. to be wide into the field and what I'm missing out of the deck that would need to be in a side deck. Well, good. I think that's what you should be doing. Right. So like, I, I, I don't know. That's just how I've been doing it. So mm. at locals, I have not been using a sideboard. You should do that. <laughs> I I should do that, but you know, I was just like going in because like, I the our our meta has been so wide mm. that it's just like, I haven't known what to build. It's good. Yeah, it's very very open. You don't right. know what your opponent's going to be. We've right. had uh, had lots of success locally, which is great. But now um, that but so. now that like people are kind of like fitting their roles, mm-hmm. I kind of know where I'm going to go with. Well, that. you know, now that we're we have uh, a Taipei right around the corner, you know that. Everybody at our locals will just be playing whatever the deck. Well, is that's not true. Taipei, right? That is not true because we have a lot of uh, people at our locals that just want to play what they want to play. Yeah, um, me included. True. Yeah, I, I think there's something there for sure, and so I'm curious to see. It might be too early. Taipei might be too early for somebody who found the the secret sauce with Tristan, but I really do think there is something there. She does have a a lot of tools to, it, to it, shut people down. I. I I've been thinking of it for a while mm. and it's 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 an interesting thought. However, uh I don't I think wind might be the trap color. Maybe. I think everything is printed in wind. I think wind is extremely strong. Mm. But I think it might be the trap color. Yeah, I, I think know. I think there might be a lot missing there. Mm. Maybe there's something to this uh this water thing. Yeah. Obviously saw some success, but that is a more like allies oriented deck. Right. And that's kind of And I think she fits into that chill really well. I think she does too. Um I don't think it's where I'd want to be though. Mm. I think I still want to keep that tempo that wind has. Yeah. But maybe try it in water. Right. Yeah, you, you, you miss out on a couple of things. Uh I think very notably stifling, uh, trap. stifling trap and surveil the winds are the, right. the real winners in, in wind. Uh and they they work very well in tandem. Correct. But, you know, water obviously has its own uh, subsection of tools as well. Right. And the combination of having access to stuff like Cerulean Decree and uh, Incapacitate can be quite strong if you're going for that sort of late game water right. stuff. You kind of want to, like, control the game early and, mm-hmm. and then just kill them. Yeah, she makes it, like, miserable uh, if you're a, uh ally-based deck or anybody that has to do combat damage once you go to the Shadow Dancer. It's just, Correct. like, actually impossible to deal damage on the ground, so... Uh, I think that part is is really strong and sort of allows her to shut out a lot of the um, aggressive decks and then the combination of cards like Incapacitate allow her to shut out the spell decks. And so I really do think there is a Merlin-esque level 3 based control pile that that can really see some success and I'm I'm curious if we'll see that in Taipei. I am too because I will be net teching it if it exists. But hey, it'll lose to Rye. So that's... uh, Will it? Yeah. Why? Yeah, everybody loses to Rye. It's a spell-based deck. Mm-hmm. I'll just incapacitate your yeah, okay. three lightning bolts. Mm-hmm. I encourage you to wa- watch that uh, that game that Sean played at Worlds. Oh, boy. If uh, if your Rye player knows what he's doing, that deck's uh, scary, dude. Surprised none of those cards are on the, the watch list. Reckless Conversion unbanned? Maybe we need more banned. Keep, uh, keep Rye down. Um... So, yeah, that's our that's our little peek at the MRC uh, metagame. We will have, obviously, more concrete data as the season continues. And, of course, after this weekend, 
we'll have some some big ascent winners and was this wind that'll uh that'll sort of dictate uh is wind allies tech anything special or is it just like basic wind allies i didn't really uh pay it much mind it's mostly just a wind allies tech i believe yeah it's just wind allies tech with uh stifling trap and uh magistrate which is very good yeah oh yeah i got i got a spicy one i might play tonight Mm. A little wind allies nonsense. Nice. Um, but hey, let us know how you guys are feeling about the burgeoning MRC metagame. What are you guys playing? Are you guys playing sweet brews or are you just defaulting to good decks from last season? Are you one of those fire Lorraine players or are you reinventing the wheel? Let us know. Uh, I think that's all that we have for you this week. Of course, next week we will have lots to talk about. We'll have Send Taipei. Uh, results. We'll have a send Taipei announcements. We'll, we'll have, have a new ban, ban list. list. Lots of very exciting things to talk about next week, and we will be back here. If you guys want to catch the show, you can catch us live every Friday, asterisk, 12 p.m. EST. Um, can you make a call for what wins Taipei? Steven. Tristan. Rye. Arcane Rye wins the event. I think that is the, the safest bet that I can make. Okay. Tristan. I think Tristan. We're both right. It's a tie in the finals. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to catch the show, you can find us live here every Friday, 12 p.m. EST. If you want to catch the previous week's episode, also on Friday, 2 p.m. EST. Somebody has to edit that right after we close the live stream Woo! today. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next week. Have a good one, guys. Woo! I wooed early. Woo! R Ric Flair. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>